Hello everyone, my name is Scott. And my name is Elizabeth. And these are our daughters, Simone and Colette. <laughs> we want to welcome you to Calvary. Back in December, our family moved all the way from Southern California area here to Alexandria, Minnesota. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and serve as the director of rehab services at Alamere Health. And I am thrilled to have just begun work for Calvary as our video production director. I'm excited to put my filmmaking and directing expertise to work for our church so we can live out our mission, leading all people to a lifelong faith in Jesus Christ. Being new to Alexandria and Calvary, here's what I love about Calvary. Calvary is very innovative and creative and very welcoming to all people. I love the services on the lake. I love how they think about little ways to engage the kids with like the suckers and the coloring. That's a big hit. And what I love about Calvary, I love the fact that everyone here has like this really can do positive energy type mentality. And it's all guided towards that vision of leading all people to a lifelong faith of Jesus Christ. And, you know, how can you not just get excited when everyone has that same excitement and same, uh, you know, passion. So, yeah, hope you guys feel that excitement and passion when you come as well. As we get ready to worship, here are some ways you can get involved in our unique mission. Here at Calvary, we celebrate the baptisms of a lot of babies. And once a year, though, well, thanks for that one. Once a year, though, we offer an opportunity for adults to be baptized or to reaffirm the promises of your baptism. This year, we're, we'll celebrate adult baptism on August 21st after worship. If you are interested, head out to calvaryalex.org baptism or give us a call in the church office. Tomorrow marks the beginning of one of the biggest weeks of the year at Calvary. It's Vacation Bible School Week. Get this! We've already had 350 kids register and we have another 180 students and adults volunteering. We're going to spend the week wrapping these kids up in God's love. We're also going to have a ton of fun. In order for, to make this happen, we need your help with a couple of things. First, it costs us $25 per kid to make VBS happen. Would you consider making a financial gift to support this important ministry? Make a gift by scanning the QR code on the screen and make your gift. Your generosity allows us to keep the weekly total week totally free for all families. And most importantly, it allows us to share the love of Jesus with kids who normally don't have a connection to faith or to a church. How many kids could you sponsor? A second way you can support our Vacation Bible School ministry is by taking a part in this year's service project. We're collecting new children's socks and underwear for a nonprofit organization oh. called Fostering Love. Fostering Love supports children and families in need in our community. Stop by your favorite store, purchase any size kids socks and underwear, and simply drop them off at the church this week. As we get ready to worship, if you're looking to stay up to date on all Calvary has to offer, like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to Calvary on YouTube or head to our website, calvaryalec.org and sign up for our brief weekly emails. Today, Hans is kicking off our new worship series, Make Waves. Make Waves is also our Vacation Bible School theme. For the next three weeks, we're all going to explore how Jesus came into this world he upset the status quo. He hung up with all the wrong people. He redefined love. Friends, that's what the love of God does. It causes us to make waves. Waves that have a ripple effect in the lives of all those around us. Thanks for joining us today. Let's worship.
everybody. Thanks for worshiping with us today. I'm Pastor Hots, and I'm so honored that you're with us. Uh, got a question for you today as we start. How many of you spent time at the community pool in your town when you were a little kid? Uh, or if you grew up on a lake, how many of you spent hour after hour, day after day, jumping off the end of your dock? Well, when I was a kid, uh, my buddies and I, we spent day after day, hour after hour at our community pool. Every day I would hop on my bike, I'd cruise to the community pool, so much so that my parents bought us uh, seasonal passes so that we could hang out with our buddies at our community pool in little old Castleton, North Dakota. But here's the deal, uh, when we'd hang out at the pool, we weren't just hanging out with our buddies. You see, my buddies and I, we were on a mission. We were on a mission. We spent hour after hour at the pool perfecting a craft. We were there week after week, day after day, perfecting a particular skill. We were there perfecting a certain epic athletic feat of enormous proportions. You see, we were there week after week, each and every summer, day after day, hour after hour. We would annoy the lifeguards, the little old ladies who were there at the pool, the girls that were there to sunbathe. We annoyed the heck out of them because we were at the pool on a mission. And our mission was this. We were going to perfect the biggest splash, <laughs> the biggest splash. Maybe when you were a kid, you did this as well. You went to the pool, jumped off the diving board again and again and again. And you, like my buddies and I, you were going to perfect the biggest splash. Man, did it annoy the lifeguards. It did it annoy the little old ladies, the little old girls who were there just sunbathing. It drove them nuts. But my buddies and I, we were really good. We were, if I can brag, we were really good. We were really good at a couple of specific dives. Does anyone remember the can opener? The can opener, uh, you hold one leg up, you jump off the diving board. It is a crowd pleaser and man, does it make a big splash. The other dive we perfected was sort of the holy grail of big splashes. Uh, we had perfected the perfect cannonball. <laughs> we were there again, week after week, day after day, hour after hour, perfecting the biggest splash. Well, why do I start with this little trip down memory, memory lane? Well, because today we are launching a brand new series here at Calvary, and that series is called Make Waves. Make Waves. A and here's what I think. That, that little story uh, about the time I spent at our community pool, I think it's a great analogy for the life that Jesus lived and the life that God wants people like you and I to live as well. Because when we look at the story of Jesus' life, here's what we find out. We find out that everywhere Jesus went, he was making waves. Everywhere Jesus went, he made waves. I mean, think about the story of Jesus' life for a minute. Jesus was always doing the a a exact opposite of what everyone expected him to do and what everyone wanted him to do. I mean, think about the things he said. He said, the first will be last, the last will be first. He was always pointing to the people that everybody in society said, those people are dirty, they're unfit, they're unclean. Jesus says, uh-uh, uh-uh. These are the people that I came to raise up. The people who were sort of the religious leaders, the ones who were nice, neat, and everybody looked up to. Jesus was actually the most critical of them. And the people that were totally unworthy of anybody's praise, Jesus went, no, those are my people. I mean, Jesus surrounded himself with a, a group of ragtag sinners. He spent time with all the sorts of people that your mom told you not to spend time with. He spent time with crooked tax collectors, prostitutes, uh, women who committed adultery. And get this, folks, it's in the Bible. Jesus even got run out of his own church in his hometown. You see, everywhere Jesus went, he was making waves. I mean, he was always challenging 
challenging the political and religious status quo in that world he, he lived in. He was forgiving people that didn't deserve to be forgiven. He was healing people on the Sabbath. There were all these rules about doing work on the Sabbath. Jesus said, hey, people are more important than rules. And Jesus, he would go to the temple. He'd overturn the tables of the money changers. And in effect, what he was doing is he was challenging the religious order of his day. You see, Jesus was always, always making waves. So I want to ask you a question today, and the question is this. When was the last time you did a cannonball? I mean, honestly, when was the last time you created waves? I don't know what it is. It seems as though the older we get, something happens to us. The older we get, we sort of trade in our cannonball dives and our can openers for nice, neat, pretty little dives into the pool. And before long, we trade in those dives into the pool for sitting on the deck chair and watching everybody else out there make waves. I don't know really what it is, but it seems that the older we get, the fewer waves we make. I don't know what it is. Maybe if you're from around here, it's your Midwestern sensibility. Maybe it's your Scandinavian or Eastern European sort of upbringing. I wonder why it is that the older we get, the fewer waves we make. When I was a kid and I would hop on my bike and go to the pool, I would almost every day grab this thing. Anyone remember what this is? A Walkman, right? I'd take my Walkman, put my headphones on my ears, I'd stick the little belt clip on my back, and I would put in a cassette tape. Uh, And often the cassette tape was of some of my favorite songs. And many of my favorite songs came from soundtracks. Soundtracks, you know what soundtracks are. They're the music that play uh, in the background uh, and sometimes in the foreground when you're watching a movie. And as a kid uh, of the 80s, there were so many great soundtracks. In fact, uh, here's one I almost wore out. Anyone remember the Top Gun soundtrack? There were so many good songs on that one. If I wasn't listening to the Top Gun soundtrack, maybe I was listening to Footloose. God bless Kenny Loggins, right? And every once in a while, I would, uh, don't tell my sister this, uh, and I can't believe I'm admitting this, I would steal my sister's copy of Dirty Dancing and I'd listen to that on the way to the pool. Maybe some of you, you grew up with soundtracks like this one, like Grease, good old John Travolta. Hmm? You see, here's what I think. I think all of us, our lives, well, here's what's true about you and me. Your life has a soundtrack. We all have music that plays in the background from the time we get up in the morning to the time we go to bed. It's made up of tunes, of voices from your past, voices of people who are important to you, maybe voices, some voices of people who even hurt you along the way. They're voices that tell us all day long what we can and what we can't do, what you should and what you shouldn't do. And here's the truth about all those soundtracks we we listen to all day long. Those soundtracks, they sometimes weigh us down and they keep us from the life that God wants for people like you and people, people like me. I mean, those soundtracks, they have us looking in the mirror and saying, man, I got hair growing in all the wrong places. Oh, man, I got way too many wrinkles. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not gifted enough. Those soundtracks, they they have us believing that there are certain people that we don't deserve to rub shoulders with. They have us saying things like, I'm not wealthy enough. I'm not talented enough. I'm not smart enough. I, I, I don't come from the right pedigree. I don't deserve to be around these people. I can't do that. I shouldn't do that. I'll never be able to do that. You see, the truth about the soundtracks that play in the background of your life and mine is this. Your soundtrack keeps you from making waves. Your soundtrack holds you back. It has you flying below the radar. It tells you you've just got to blend into the woodwork. 
That soundtrack that plays in the background of your life, it holds you back and it weighs you down. And it keeps you from making waves. Here's what I think. In fact, I'm quite certain of this. That God created you to make waves. God did. Do you know this? God created you to make waves. Now, I think we as Christian people, we often think that making waves is the opposite of what it means to be Christian. I mean, Christians often use language like, to be a Christian means we should be obedient. To be Christian means we should be on our knees. To be Christian means that we should sort of be the ones to keep the peace in the world. As Christians, we should be the ones who don't make a fuss about things. And all that might be true from time to time, but here's what I'm quite certain of. Just as Jesus came into this world to make waves with the love of God, you have a God who created you to make waves. And far too often, though, the soundtracks in your life and mine, they hold us back. They tell us, no, 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 no. You know your place. They tell us, don't make waves. You see, here's the truth. That soundtrack that rattles around in your head, God didn't create you with that soundtrack. No, God created you in such a way that God created you to make waves. But unfortunately, that soundtrack, it keeps beating us down. It keeps telling us to stay in your place. It keeps telling you what you can't and shouldn't do. But there's a truth. In fact, there are several truths about the way God created you that remind us that God created people like you and me to make waves. For example, when God looked at you, God didn't go, oops. God didn't go, hmm. God didn't go, I wonder if I can have a second chance. No, do you know what God said when God created you? God said this. God said, you are very good. You know this, don't you? If you go back to the story in Genesis where where the authors of the Bible tell the story of the creation of the world, it says in the first couple of days of creation, God made the most basic things. It, It said, God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and gathered the waters he called seas And God saw that, say it with me, it was good. You see, after God had created on that first day, he looked out and he said, yeah, this is is good. And then he would go on and he'd create plants and trees and vegetation. On the next day, it says, "The, the land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw again that, say it with me, It was good. And on the next day, God would create the moon, the sun, the stars. It says this, God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And again, God saw that, say it with me, it was good. And this would go on day after day. God would do his creating and at the end of the day, God would say it was good. But get this, on the sixth day of creation, God said, I'm going to do something special. And that's when God created you and me. God created humans. God created you and me as the pinnacle of God's creation. And at the end of the sixth day, here's what God did. God saw all that he had made. And on that sixth day, after God had created you, God changed God's tune, God upped the ante. And what did God see? God saw that it was, say it with me, very good. See, the truth about you, the truth about me, aren't the voices that we hear in that soundtrack that rattles around in our head. No, the truth about you is this. You are very good. When God looks down at you, God goes, yeah, that's the best I could do. That is my masterpiece. You are very good. Do you know what else God, when God created you, God did? 
You see, here's what God did. God made you in the image of God. You are created in the image of God. Did you know this? It says in Genesis these words, when God was getting ready to create you and me, then God said, let us make humankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. You see, rather than those voices that tell you what you can't, what you shouldn't, God says, no, no, no. I created you in my own image. And here's the truth about the things God creates in God's image. God doesn't create junk. You see, here's the truth about you. You were created in the image of God. And last but certainly not least, God created you with intention, with intention. Sometimes I like to research goofy things. Uh, a couple of years ago, I bought a, a Ford F-150. I've always wanted a truck, so finally I got a truck. It's the most popular truck in America. Do you know that in Detroit, Ford produces 900,000 F-150s every year? That's uh, 2,500 trucks a day 102 every hour. Isn't that interesting? It's this massive assembly line. Apple, I have an iPhone. Do you know how many iPhones they produce every year? 2.3 million iPhones, excuse me, not 2.3, it's 230 million iPhones every year. That's 630,000 iPhones every day about 26,000 every hour. It's this massive machine of an assembly line. You see, I think sometimes when we think about how we were created, we think we're just another number in God's eyes. But the truth is, you were created with intention. When David talked about how we were formed in God's image, these are some of the words he said, for you created me, God, my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. You see, the truth is, not those voices of your soundtrack. The truth is, God created you with intention. And the truth of that is this, that you, you were made to create waves. And so folks, as we begin this new worship series, it's called Make Waves. Over the next couple of weeks, here's what we're going to invite you to do. We're going to invite you to consider taking a leap, if you will. What would it be like for us to be known as the people who are willing in our community to take a leap, to take big risks, to be willing to make waves with the love of God? Because here's what I'm quite certain of. The next generation the next generation, they need us desperately to teach them how to do the same, how to make waves. Folks, let me pray for you. Good and gracious God, you know that many of us, the older we get, the more we forget how to create waves. God, we fly below the radar. We're often less than bold with your love. And so God, over these next several weeks, teach us how to make waves, how to make waves with your love. God, help us to look at the life of Jesus and all the ways he went around making waves, that we might be the same kind of people, that we might do the same kind of things so that all the world might know you and know your love. We pray this in your name. Amen.
Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Cause I am found, I am yours, I am loved. so much for joining us for worship today. Please join us in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We're so grateful you're with us, and especially if this is your first time with us. If this is your first time with us, we are just so grateful. And we want to actually invite you to consider taking a next step with us. Now, don't worry. It's an easy next step. We invite you to head out to our website, calvaryalec.org, and there, just hit the button that says sign up for emails. What's that all about? Well, every week on Friday, we send out a note 
a brief note just sharing all the ways you can get involved here at Calvary and ways that we want to help you grow in your faith. We'd love for you to join us. Hey, this week at Calvary is probably our biggest week of the summer. We're celebrating Vacation Bible School. We're inviting uh, kids from all over our community to join us right here at the church for a week of Bible stories, songs, games, and all kinds of goofiness. Get this, we already have 320 kids signed up. We got another 50 junior leaders, 180 adults who are going to be helping. It's unreal what God is doing. All this is possible because of your generosity. So we wanna say thank you. A uh, couple of ways that you can help out with our Vacation Bible School program. First, would you pray for the kids who are going to be joining us? About a third of those kids come from uh, families where church just isn't a priority. Their faith isn't a part of their daily life. And so we wanna introduce them and surround them with the love of Jesus. So would you pray for them? Secondly, you can support our Vacation Bible School ministry by sponsoring some of the kids that will be attending. There's a QR code on the screen, just scan that and you can make a gift. It costs us about $25 per student. We'd love for you to, to sponsor one, two, maybe a handful of kids this year. And last but not least, we have every year during Vacation Bible School, we do a service project. This year, we're collecting socks and underwear, children's socks and underwear, for an organization called Fostering Love. If you're here in the area, you can head to your favorite store, pick up some children's socks, underwear, it doesn't matter the size, drop them off here at the church. Uh, if you uh, live elsewhere, you're invited to do the same thing, except drop it all in the mail, send it here to the church. Thanks for taking part in that important work. As we close today, again, thank you for your generosity that allows us to reach out to hundreds of kids every year through our Vacation Bible School program. Thank you for allowing us to be a church that responds to the needs of our community. As we close, we're going to offer an opportunity for you to make your offerings today. You can do that in any of the ways uh, found on the screen. The first and easiest is just to head out to our website, calvaryalec.org. Hit the button that says Give, and there you can sign up for a one-time or reoccurring gift. Just takes 30 seconds to do it. Second way you can make your gift is simply with that app on your phone, Venmo. Uh, you can see our handle on the screen. You can also write a check, send it to the address on the screen, or if you're not sure how to make your gift, just feel free to give us a call. We'd love to connect with you and talk about the ways that we can live the generous life that God is calling people like you and me to. Folks, thanks for being with us today. And folks, please join us next week as we talk more about all the ways God is inviting people like you and me to make waves with the love of God. Have a great week.